Oh my god, it's my favorite Smash Brothers games I never want to play again! Super Smash Brothers for Wii U and Nintendo 3DS, or Smash Brothers. Four. Oh god, I have so much nostalgia for these releases. Uh, not only these releases, but the build-up to release. I feel like the build-up to a Smash Brothers game, starting with Super Smash Brothers Brawl, is oftentimes more exciting than the end result. Uh, it's kind of like Christmas in that sense. You ever feel like the Christmas season is like more exciting than Christmas Day itself? Like it's just the build up, build up, build up. You have all that music playing in the stores and you have all the lights all around. But then on Christmas Day, you wake up early, you go to your parents' house, you sit there for 12 hours and you just hang out with your family. Uh, you get you get some presents, you give some presents and that's about it. It's a pretty... <laughs> It's a pretty, it's, it's a pretty day where it's just, you just spend time with family, but the build up, you're spending time with family, you're doing all kinds of little activities, you're listening to all this music, you're seeing all this media, all that stuff. I feel like the build up is what Christmas is all about. Christmas day, and who gives a damn? And that to some extent is how I feel about Smash Brothers games. And I just kind of want to talk about uh, these ones in particular because uh, they, they were just so important to me back in 2014, you know, I'm massively nostalgic over this Wii U era, bucko. Those were my high school days, so that was when I was starting to be able to drive on my own, I had my own money, I had my own job, all that stuff. And when you're in high school, you have nothing better to do than focus most of your energy on what characters are gonna be in Smash Brothers. So these two in particular were announced at E3 2011, a bit kind of off the cuff, just Satoru Iwata saying, hey, and Smash Brothers is coming to Wii U and 3DS. Uh, and I think it's pretty crazy because uh, I, I think the main takeaway from that announcement was how it was coming to Wii U. But, you know, like, I, I don't think it registered for a lot of people how, yeah, they announced Smash Brothers is coming to the 3DS, which I think was far bigger news. I mean, back when I was playing Super Smash Brothers Brawl, I, I was just dreaming of being able to play that game on my Nintendo DS. I, I thought it was more than possible. I mean, like the DS, you had stuff like Super Mario 64 DS. And I remember back in the day seeing that uh, fake leak for Super Mario Galaxy DS floating around on YouTube. And that looked damn real back then. I mean, it's still impressive today, but back then on like low quality ass YouTube, like yeah, it, it, it looked, it looked completely official. So for my little 2008 mind, I, I felt like there was no reason why Smash Brothers shouldn't work on a handheld. Uh, of course, looking back at it all, yeah, the DS, I feel, is a bit too f***ing <laughs> stinky to run a Smash Brothers game. You might be able to, but it would have to be of a similar quality to, like, Super Smash Brothers on the N64, which that's a classic in its own right, but as a modern release, it would just feel very odd on the DS. So, I think they made the right call waiting a generation for the 3DS to make Smash Brothers on the go a reality. And it turns out we had to wait a full ass year for more information. It's mainly because the director of the Smash Brothers series, Masahiro Sakurai, was busy finishing up Kid Icarus Uprising, which was the game he was directing at the time. Uh, and then after that game, I remember uh, he posted like this whiteboard drawing of all these Smash Brothers characters. Uh, which was pretty wild because that was like the first time we got any concrete info about this game. Now, I believe this happened sometime in the summer of 2012, uh, and, uh, you know, it showed, like, the main characters, but you also had some, uh, some weird little, little offshoots, like Mr. Game & Watch, you know, characters that people, uh, before this game released, were still debating whether or not he was cut or not. But in the summer, we also got the info that Bandai Namco was developing Super Smash Bros which was, uh, you know, a bit concerning at the time, honestly. It was kind of that feeling of, like, Bandai Namco, d don't they make f***ing Pac-Man Party for Wii? There was, like, a slight worry that it's just, like, because this is not made by an internal studio or something, that, uh, oh, well, what if Smash Brothers isn't gonna be as quality as before? But, uh, yeah, obviously, I mean, like, m most Nintendo games at this point aren't made by internal studios. And, like, the first two Smash Brothers games were developed by HAL Laboratory, and, like, they're an amazing development team, but, like, you know, they, they primarily pretty much exclusively make Kirby games now. Which, no disrespect, but making a game of the size of a modern Smash Brothers, I think, 
it, it requires like a multi-layered giant studio like Bandai Namco. Which is saying, uh, I remember when Super Smash Bros. Ultimate was first teased uh, in that March 2018 Nintendo Direct. And uh, all they showed was the Smash Brothers logo, and uh, they had a copyright saying, original game, HAL Laboratory. I saw people getting hyped up over that. Like, oh man, they're going back to basics or something. They're going back to the dream team. And I'm like, what are you talking about? You're just acting like Smash 4, developed by Bandai Namco, was like bad because Bandai Namco developed it? What? And it's implied that HAL Laboratory, the Kirby developers, the developers that have exclusively made Kirby games in the past, like, decade, are gonna make the best Smash Brothers game ever in 2018? Like, come on, what? I, 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 I didn't understand how, like, some people were getting hyped up over that. In reality, that copyright notice was just, like, it, it was just saying they developed the original series, like, the original game. I just thought that was kind of a weird thing to get hyped up over and acting like Bandai Namco... Like, not developing the game was pretty exciting. Like, n no, they, they did a fantastic job with these games. And they made it so then these games came out in a decent amount of time. Uh, which, you know, when we look back at this, like, the time frame that they developed these games in is insane. I mean, teased at E3 2011, when, like, there was nothing done on the game. Absolutely nothing. And then formally announced that Bandai Namco would be developing the game in 2012 so like that's when you kind of start the game and then exactly one year later at e3 2013 we got full trailer full gameplay and then a year later it releases and like i remember back then like people were complaining about the wait for smash brothers like acting like we've been waiting for so long for smash brothers when like nowadays i like there are d dozens of games that got announced like four years ago that we still haven't seen anything from. But whatever, it was announced that Bandai Namco would be developing the game, and then we had to wait another year until E3 2013, when the game was formally unveiled as Super Smash Bros. for Wii U and Super Smash Bros. for Nintendo 3DS. Not temporary titles, they sure do sound like it, but it was clarified later that uh, when they showed these titles, you know, in the trailer, afterwards they said, yep, those are the full titles, which is just kind of goofy. I mean, like, I get it, because uh, this is a very unique Smash Brothers experience. These are kind of the same games, but not at the same time. Games with the same gameplay, the same characters, the same movesets, all of that stuff. But the stages are different. Uh, there are at least some of them are shared, but some, most of them, are different across both games. Different modes, some different aesthetics. So, these are two different games, but the same at the same time. It's very interesting. And that was all shown off in the E3 2013 trailer, which, my god, was so exciting. This initiated the whole Smash Brothers logo just slashing through the screen and engulfing the entire uh, display in flames. I really prefer how Smash 4 uh, did this compared to Smash Ultimate. You look at Smash Ultimate's opening to all of its trailers and they do that minimalistic white thing uh, and uh, and it's just kind of, uh, I, I, I don't know, it just, it, it feels odd in comparison. It doesn't feel like the Smash 4 one where it's like, it, it feels like epic and it feels like you feel this heartbeat. Uh, the Smash Ultimate one, it's like a wireframe version of it. It's very strange and it has like these weird like beep sounding sound effect. I, I don't know. Smash 4's debut trailer uh, was incredible and uh, it, it showed all these characters and franchises in the highest quality CG you could imagine at the time. Uh, you know, starting off with Animal Crossing, which was very interesting considering how, uh, you know, an Animal Crossing character was considered for Brawl, but it was kind of like, ah, you know, it doesn't make sense. They they don't fight in that game, which is a dumb argument because I think that's the entire point of Smash Brothers to see characters that you wouldn't expect to be fighting each other, fighting each other. But it's whatever. They they had this big montage of all the all the franchises and these little these little animations showing the the characters doing just something to the music, I, like ooh. Ooh, and then they showed Mario forming uh, with uh, with the outline coming in for the 3DS version. You see him go into the dual displays, and uh, yeah, the 3DS version was the first one shown, and it looked good. Kind of what you'd expect the game to look like, to be honest. Outside of the outline, I remember a lot of people equating the game to uh, looking a lot like Melee, 
which I think was mostly because they toned down the realism from Brawl. Uh, you know, Mario still has denim, but <laughs> it isn't as it isn't as apparent. But then the outline is shedded off, and Mario goes full blown HD, falls onto battlefield, and boom, footage of the Wii U game, and then showing that Villager is gonna be the new character. Boom, title reveal, 2014. All right, you wanna hear some dumb little Scott trivia fact? For some reason, in the live stream version of the Nintendo Direct from E3 2013, they used a different font when they showed 2014 appear on screen compared to uh, the actual uploaded version of the E3 2013 Nintendo Direct on their YouTube channel. Yeah, it used a different font. I don't know, but the big boy announcement obviously came afterwards. They had this new challenger approaching banner. And yes, it was Mega Man, which came at a brilliant time considering pretty much like Mega Man was in the, the, the fucking dumps, man. Capcom canceled a bunch of Mega Man projects. Nothing new Mega Man related was really happening. But here he comes in Smash Brothers. And Mega Man Smash Brothers appearance was so faithful, almost to a fault. Like it was genuinely NES Mega Man completely in 3D. He even does the little foot fidget thing that he does in the NES games. It's crazy. Then later on the E3 show floor, uh, they announced Wii Fit Trainer as kind of a gag thing uh, where uh, they, they debuted the trailer and uh, they started off uh, kind of implying that it was just more Wii Fit U or something. Uh, but then it was obvious that it was a Smash Brothers trailer. And boom, those were our three newcomers. We finally got to see the game, and it was in a playable state. They uh, actually showed before the E3 show floor opened, Masahiro Sakurai came out and demoed a match with Mario versus Mega Man. It was playable, but I'm sure it wasn't in a state where they'd feel comfortable with having like everybody at E3 come up to the demo units and get their sticky little fingers all over it. So, uh, you know, that's understandable, but they still showed a good amount of gameplay and with three newcomers as well. They also relaunched the Smash Brothers website, uh, which uh, this was all kind of playing along with uh, what they did with Smash Brothers Brawl, which Smash Brothers Brawl had the Smash Brothers Dojo where they had a new update every single day. And these updates would generally be like, uh, you know, something massive, like a new character uh, or something very small, like, oh, uh, <laughs> bananas are in the game. The way Smash 4 did it was a bit different though. They mainly used Miiverse uh, on the Wii U and uh, Sakurai would post an update where it's the photo of the day, where he would just post a photo. And uh, many times these photos would reveal nothing. They would just be silly little screenshots, but many times it actually reveals something like a new item, a returning item, a new assist trophy. Uh, and oftentimes we'd get a returning character. And this is what I loved about the Smash 4 build up to launch. Smash Ultimate is obviously an amazing game. And it was so exciting at E3 2018 to see that all the characters were coming back. I would never want to take that away from that moment. However, it's just, it, it's different stuff, man. You know, like I, I love the build up here and I love the build up to Smash Ultimate, but they were different, you know, and for good reasons. I'm not saying that Smash Ultimate needed to be like this. It was just so fun to speculate on which characters would get cut because that was an element of Smash Brothers, you know? Characters were cut from Melee to Brawl. So you were kind of expecting like, which characters are gonna get cut from Brawl to Wii U? And not only that, but the big thing was, who are the new characters? Uh, and uh, yeah, th this was this was insanely fun to speculate on and just kind of consider like, okay, which characters can they do without? Which characters don't make sense anymore? And obviously, the big one that I, I remember Sakurai specifically kind of alluded to near, like very early on, was how Ice Climber probably wasn't gonna make it in due to the limitations of the 3DS. But not only that, but I feel like it, it potentially had to do with a bit of eight player smash in the Wii U game. I don't think entirely, but uh, you know, uh, when eight player smash is uh, enabled in the Wii U game, you can't do it on certain stages. It's been shown that the character models in a player smash have less bones <laughs> in them. Like Wii Fit Trainer has less bones in her thumb. Like, so they kind of have to downgrade elements to get this to run eight players. Uh, so maybe that's the case. 
but 100% it's, it's, it's also the 3DS game that held it back. But yeah, man, that was a big thing. Uh, I remember, you know, waking up every morning and just seeing like uh, the Miiverse photo of the day. Now, uh, I didn't really do this a lot until like 2014. Uh, 2013 was kind of like, boom, that was the year that we finally got Smash Brothers footage and it was unveiled and all that good stuff. And they also did a couple of returning character unveils, you know, they'd show on uh, Miiverse, maybe like Peach got uh, re-unveiled, Luigi got re-unveiled, Olimar came in for Pikmin 3. They did a lot of that for, uh, you know, like uh, upcoming game releases. So Pikmin 3 launched, uh, they unveiled Olimar. Uh, the Year of Luigi, let's celebrate Year of Luigi. Luigi was announced. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze released. Diddy Kong's coming back. But for the most part, throughout 2013, Smash Brothers stayed relatively quiet. It was kind of like every now and then we'd see like, oh, that's a new stage or that's a returning stage or oh, maybe a new item here and there. It wasn't until December of 2013 when we got our first new character reveal, which was Rosalina and Luma. That was a bit surprising. I found that Rosalina was a bit of a love it or hate it character inclusion, mainly because it, it, it feels like the Mario franchise had all the characters you really needed. You had the core group there. You had Mario, Luigi, Peach, and Bowser. That's all you need. Those are the necessary ones. Anything outside of that is, is a bit superfluous. It's kind of like, oh, well, that's cool. But, you know, like you look at all the other franchises in Smash Brothers and you kind of think like, okay, maybe they could deserve... Uh, a rep more, but at the end of the day, Rosalina is an incredibly unique character, and uh, I think her inclusion was very worthwhile. But at the same time, you know, it, it did kind of feel like, oh man, you know, like, what about the other characters? But god damn it, they proved me wrong. February 2014, fucking Little Mac got revealed. Now, this was my most wanted character at the time. I was so happy to see Little Mac. Uh, I remember I watched this reveal uh, when I was in the bathroom at my job. I was cleaning the bathrooms and the Nintendo Direct was going on uh, while I was on my shift. And uh, I just played it while I was in the bathroom and I saw a little Mac, that was pretty cool. And they messed around with different art styles in these reveal trailers. That's the thing, uh, Brawl had unique reveal trailers for some characters, specifically Snake and Sonic. Those were the two ones that got unique trailers. Other than that, for the most part, these characters the new characters in Brawl kind of just got new updates on the website. This time for Smash Brothers Wii U and 3DS, uh, they did full-blown CGI reveal trailers. It was amazing, but that all came at a price. See, they decided to invest in the CGI trailers instead of story mode, uh, I believe at E3 2013 or around there. Uh, it was announced, or Sakurai specifically said, there wouldn't be a story mode single player campaign in these games, uh, mainly because uh, people uploaded the cutscenes from the Subspace Emissary and Brawl online, and that took a lot of the, the oomph out of them. I'm sorry, that's kind of stupid. I understand, like, that's kind of disappointing, but it's also like people are enjoying the cutscenes regardless. And, you know, if the cutscenes are the only reason to play Subspace Emissary, I think that's more of a problem with Subspace Emissary. <laughs> this game obviously doesn't need a story mode or major cutscenes. Uh, but, uh, it was definitely pretty disappointing. But man, it was all building up to that Smash Brothers specific direct in April of 2014. Now, at the time, I was incredibly excited for this, and I thought it was an incredible direct. Though, uh, to be fair, a lot of it was a bit more technical than I think I was used to Nintendo Directs being. The Smash Brothers direct really focused on just a bunch of more technical things, uh, and we didn't get a ton, a ton of character reveals in it. We got an end reveal of Greninja, uh, which uh, everybody assumed was Mewtwo, uh, just from the first few frames of the uh, the silhouette of Greninja. And uh, there, there was a couple other things. There's a lot of things to chew on in this direct when it came to speculation. Uh, so uh, one of the major things was how characters could no longer transform. So something like Sheik and Zelda, they were two separate characters. Characters like Zero Suit Samus and Samus Two separate characters. So they unveiled those guys in the Nintendo Direct. They unveiled Yoshi. Huge surprise there, he's in the game. And because of getting rid of character transformations, they unveiled Charizard by himself in the Greninja trailer. 
uh, which uh, these Smash 4 trailers introduced these like little little pun taglines whenever a new character would get unveiled. Charizard blah, 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 comes in the game, which is weird. There are a couple of random little like things where it's like, hey, you know, this is reserved for new characters only, unless we say so. So Charizard was like the first old character to get like the little character reveal splash screen. And I guess it's because he's never had his own spot on the character select screen. But uh, yeah, he was in Smash Brothers Brawl as a part of the Pokemon trainer. They also did character splash screens for returning characters as DLC. So, uh, you know, later down the line, after these games released, when they started doing DLC and bringing back some characters that weren't in the base game, you got that from Mewtwo, you got that for Lucas, you got that for Roy. You know, just kind of interesting to see how Smash Brothers sometimes <laughs> breaks its own rules, rules that never existed to, to, to begin with, but still. Though, oh man, I forgot how in the Nintendo Direct, they did have character splash screens for the returning fighters like Yoshi and Zero Suit Samus and all that, but they were just still images, you know, it was, they didn't get like full-blown reveal trailers or whatever. So yeah, just a lot to chew on here. Uh, even, even for people that wanted to look into things a little too deep, there was like a specific cloud in the Greninja trailer. When Greninja jumped off of the tree branch, there was a cloud that looked like Pac-Man, and everybody was like, hey, it's Bandai Namco. Pac-Man's gotta be in the game. Yeah, Pac-Man was definitely like the go-to third-party rep. Uh, I mean, like, hey, you got Mega Man, Sonic, Pac-Man is the main one that makes sense here, 100%. Uh, I, I find it crazy that people uh, could, didn't consider him. They were kind of like, no, 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 it's probably not Pac-Man. They'll probably do a Tekken guy. Sure, they eventually did a Tekken guy in Smash Ultimate, but that's like years later, man. Pac-Man's the one you have to do. And it's absurd to me that Sakurai didn't even think Pac-Man was viable when uh, Miyamoto, Miyamoto wanted Pac-Man in Smash Brothers Brawl. He was like, that doesn't make any sense to me. I'm like, you designed Mr. Game & Watch! Leading up to E3, hype was at an all-time high. I mean, like, this was when the Miiverse photos of the day actually started to reveal, like, legitimate new information we hadn't seen before. Uh, you know, like, oh man, there were so many more new items getting revealed, so many returning characters coming back. A lot of surprising ones. I wasn't expecting Ike to come back, I was expecting Ike to get replaced with uh, a character from Fire Emblem Awakening, like Krom. I think a lot of people thought that. Uh, same with Lucario. Lucario came back. Uh, these characters kind of felt like flavor of the month picks, you know? Like they replaced, you know, it was kind of seen that Lucario replaced Mewtwo. Ike replaced Roy, all from Melee. But as it turns out, it, it feels like the, these were just brand new characters and they weren't supposed to be just flavor of the month kind of dealios, you know? Uh, the fact that they were brought over to subsequent games shows that, uh, no, they were always much more than that. So that was pretty interesting. Now, this was when leaks were really starting to run rampant and they were really interesting to just kind of look into and just kind of think about, you know, like, like, oh man, what makes sense? What doesn't make sense? And one of the big ones going into E3 was the Gamatsu leak. This was a big boy one. So uh, th this pretty much talked about how uh, th there was a bunch of characters that were uh, heard to be in Smash 4 and uh, many of them were becoming true. Mies. Pac-Man, Palutena, Krom, Shulk, and the Chorus Kids from Rhythm Heaven. To be fair though, a lot of these were kind of like really popular picks for most people, uh, just in terms of like what makes sense, you know, Pac-Man. It's Pac-Man. Palutena was a big one. There, there was like another leak of Palutena uh, from like a, a screenshot of the 3DS game. And I believe that turned out to actually be fake which was insane to me because it was like so well done, but no, uh, it turned out to be real. And uh, you know, me, me fighters ended up getting revealed. Uh, Palutena, Pac-Man and me fighters all got revealed at E3. Um, and then Shulk, Shulk was another big one. And uh, then we had Krom and the Chorus Kids from Rhythm Heaven, which seemed like a fun, wacky little pick. So there was a lot of credibility going into this, mainly because they got so many of these right. But to be fair, a lot of them were kind of popular picks you know it'd kind of be like saying if there was a leak before smash 64 like oh i heard mario is gonna be in the game but yeah we moved into e3 2014 and it was announced beforehand that nintendo would talk about uh their own nfc figures uh for the wii u uh, because this was during the big toys to life boom and the wii u did have an nfc 
reader on it, so it only made sense. And uh, yeah, they fully unveiled Amiibo alongside Smash Brothers for Wii U and the Mii Fighters. The Mii Fighters got an interesting trailer because this was like the only one that wasn't really CGI. It was Reggie and Iwata duking it out, which was incredible. This is like one of my favorite E3s of all time, mainly because it just had announcement after announcement after announcement. No fat, it was all just killer stuff. Uh, it was either like brand new announcements or just genuinely really interesting like developer interviews that wouldn't last too long. It was amazing. And the way they started it off was incredible. Like one of the best ways Nintendo has ever kicked off an E3 event. They had that dumbass robot chicken segment and then it moved into a giant fight scene between Awada and Reggie uh, unveiling not only Miis, but Amiibo. And I think it's kind of interesting how they unveiled it, mainly because it was very risky. I feel like the way they unveiled it could have been very confusing, almost as if, oh, you have to scan the Amiibo to unlock the characters now? Which is actually a rumor for a bit there. I believe on like the Best Buy listing for Smash Brothers for Wii U, it originally said something like, oh, use Amiibo to unlock characters early. Uh, I think that would have been a fine use for Amiibo, honestly. Like if you would have picked up the, whatever, the Duck Hunt Amiibo, and you wanted to unlock Duck Hunt immediately, boom, just scan it there, boom. You don't have to buy the Amiibo, but you can do that, and there you go, easy way. But here they had this big blowout on the Mii Fighters, uh, which the way they did them made sense here, though uh, part of me kind of wishes that uh, they had a bit more like me Wii series personality, but to be fair, I mean, like, the, the Miis are all about, like, hey, it's putting you in the game. Part of me feels like they kind of overdid it with three different me fighter types. You know, you have Sword Fighter, Gunner, and Brawler. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I feel like you kind of could have just kept it at Brawler. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it's whatever. I, I have no problem with how they did it, but I kind of like to think about the potential of, like, oh, what if they did it a little differently? I don't know, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, like, back when I was a kid, I, I would have just absolutely loved Me Fighters and Smash Brothers. And I, I do get some joy out of them. Me and my friends sometimes, uh, do just a dumb, like, like, if we're, if it's late at night and we're just dicking around, we just, we don't even want to think about it, we'll just make memes of, like, people we know or just random things and, uh, just put them in Smash Brothers, uh, set them to, like, level 9 or, or something, uh, different levels, and just, and just, like, whatever, just watch them fight. <laughs> and just see who wins. I don't know. Um, part, part of that's just very entertaining to me. But it was here that we got this big, like, montage of the 3DS version, uh, where we got to see just a bunch of footage of, of the game just in action, and it was all just flying by all at once, and it was so, like, incomprehensible, but it showed how much was in this game, regardless of it being on a handheld. This is where we got the full-blown release date, uh, which uh, was alluded to in the April Direct. Now, that's where they said Smash Brothers for 3DS is coming out in summer, which made no goddamn sense. Summer and winter of 2014. I almost kind of felt like, oh, these games are going to come out simultaneously. No, the way they did it made more sense uh, because Smash for 3DS is incredible, but it's still, like, it, it's not as fully featured as the Wii U game. So, this is kind of like the appetizer course, uh, where it, it works on its own, but, you know, you buy this, and then, and then, like, a month or two later, you get this. But yeah, at E3, they announced it was October. October 3rd, baby. That's not summer, everybody said. To be fair, in Japan, it launched in, like, early to mid-September, right before the official end of summer. So, uh, I, I guess I guess they they stuck true to uh, to their word, but mm -hmm. later in the E3 direct, uh, they ended it with the reveal of Palutena. I think that was kind of a, a weird <laughs> choice for the end of the E3 direct, uh, mainly because like it's it's not like a bad announcement, but it's just you know Palutena is not as as much of like a heavy hitting character as like a Pac Man which they unveiled behind closed doors. They had this developer roundtable with uh, Masahiro Sakurai, and I remember seeing updates on Twitter as it was happening, where it was like, it's just like Masahiro Sakurai has appeared on stage. Okay, okay, Pac-Man's in the game. Okay. <laughs> and that was it. I remember people saying like, oh yeah, his design is based off of Pac-Land. I'm like, what the hell does that mean? Yeah, apparently like they mainly based his design off of the fucking arcade game Pac-Land. Why? Now, in reality, like, it's it's the Pac-Man we know from, like, Pac-Man World and Pac-Man World 2 and Pac-Man World 3, um, which just, I, I 
think makes more sense to say. They wanted to clarify that stuff because, uh, you know, you had the more recent design of Pac-Man with like the ghostly adventures and all that nonsense. And everybody was like, I don't want that in Smash Brothers. I don't want that. <laughs> And I'm like, fair enough. I think Smash Brothers did a good job of kind of taking that design and being like, no, don't do that anymore. Bring back the original Pac-Man design because the Pac-Man world design, there's nothing wrong with it. It works great. Uh, you know, I'm not going to be like, oh man, it's it's the perfect design. Oh my God. And I'm not going to act like the Ghostly Adventures design is like horrendous or anything, but it just feels a lot more like marketing oriented. It feels a lot more like we're going to appeal to kids and just have a wacky, relatable character. I'm like, it's fucking Pac-Man. He eats ghosts. And the black eyes design just works a lot better because, you know, it just, it feels like a classic character, you know? He has the pie eyes, uh, which is very much like an old school cartoon character, but it also makes sense because, you know, he, he's Pac-Man. His eyes look like Pac-Man. But yeah, I just find it kind of weird that they decided to end the E3 event with Palutena. They probably did that because uh, it's a far more incredible trailer animation-wise. Like, it's very exciting. Uh, they have this, like, anime art style that they used in, like, Kid Icarus promotional short films. Uh, which was something else that was really cool, how in a lot of these reveal trailers, they utilized different art styles uh, that kind of made it feel a lot more like the specific games, which is really neat. Pac-Man's trailer is a lot more basic, but I do like it. I like how basic it is. It's just very fun, and it's very cool, and I just love that the uh, three major third-party characters in this game are Sonic, Mega Man, and Pac-Man. I, I love that you have Mario, Mega Man, Pac-Man, and Sonic in this game. It just feels right. It's like these are the mascot icons of gaming. And they made a big deal about that. They knew that was the case, you know? Like, you have these four four of the biggest mascots in the business. After E3, like, hype was at an all-time high. It was so goddamn fun to speculate and discuss these games, man. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm being real with you. I was listening to so many, like, discussions on YouTube. Uh, this was when kind of, like, uh, longer-form discussions were getting big. So I remember, like, listening to a lot of these, like, in the car and uh, just... Just, I don't know, when I was, like, cleaning up my room and all that. Loved hearing theories. Loved hearing, like, what people thought made sense, what didn't make sense. And the character reveals weren't stopping. In July, we got just, like, a dedicated live stream event of a new character reveal, which was a bunch of them. Uh, so this was when we got the Fire Emblem character, which uh, kind of, uh, you know, went against a lot of expectations. I think they knew Krom was expected, uh, but uh, no, they didn't do Krom. They they showed Lucina off first, which was like, what the hell? And then Robin, which was the Avatar playable character in uh, Fire Emblem Awakening, which was very much, like, not expected. And also a part of this trailer, we got Captain Falcon, which was a character people were speculating on whether or not he actually made the cut or not, which is crazy. And at the end of the trailer, they showed off the female Robin, and also how Krom was a part of Robin's Final Smash, which uh, I, I kind of mistook, I, I, saw, I saw a lot of other people mistook as well, that Krom was actually also in the game. Uh, but no, he was just a part of Robin's Final Smash, whatever. During the summer, we got a major leak, though. This was the ESRB leak of the 3DS game. So uh, a, a picture of the uh, character select screen leaked and uh, I was one of the people that thought this was fake at first. Gonna be honest, it's mainly because the 3DS character select screen in the final game looks like ass. It just looks kind of stupid and the order of the characters made no sense to me. Well, I mean, it made sense, but it's also like th there were certain parts of it that I was just like, I couldn't get behind, man. So the main thing that just kind of stuck out to me was how Yoshi separated Mario characters. You had all the Mario characters at first, then Yoshi, then more Mario characters. Now, Yoshi is a Mario character, but in Smash Brothers, Yoshi is considered to be in his own series, the Yoshi series. Then you had this little section of clone characters, including Dr. Mario getting brought back, and that was in its own little, like, whatever, fucking shadow realm. A lot of it just didn't make sense to me, and a lot of it, um, people were trying to find uh, little, little plot holes in, uh, you know, the famous one was how Shulk's character, uh, render was very much like, oh, well, that's just Little Mac. But this showed the entire base roster of the game. We got, like, returning characters we didn't know were coming back, like Ness. We got brand new characters, like 
Shulk, who wasn't revealed yet, Bowser Jr., and the Duck Hunt Dog. But as time went on, uh, more and more from this leak came out, and it became very obvious that, yep, this might just be real. And this was fully confirmed uh, sometime in late August. Uh, this was, uh, this was, uh, back when, uh, back when I was going back to school, I remember waking up early that day. It was like seven in the morning, man. And, uh, you know, I wake up and I'm on my couch, you know, taking like 10, 20 minutes to just eat some breakfast before I drive off to school. And I refresh my YouTube page and, uh, boom, zero seconds ago, Smash Brothers uploaded a new trailer. It was the Shulk trailer, which which felt like this monumental occasion. You know, like here is a character from a game that North America, Nintendo of America specifically, refused to localize for the longest time. And then boom, we finally got the character in Smash Brothers. Like that, that trailer always just makes me obscenely happy. Even though I'm not a huge Xenoblade guy, I, I just find that trailer to make me incredibly damn happy. But this confirmed when you looked at Shulk's render, yep, that leak was real. Uh, th there was a lot of news that came out that day. Uh, that trailer was shown off in a Japan-only Nintendo Direct that also announced the new 3DS, new 3DS XL, and Xenoblade Chronicles 3D getting ported to the new 3DS systems. And around this time, we just got like this media blowout. It's one of those things where like a month or so before a game launches, Nintendo just does like all these overview trailers and all this stuff. And uh, Smash Brothers 3DS got that. I remember... In one of the Japanese overview trailers, uh, they did this giant, like, collage of all these different game screens, and one of them accidentally showed, like, a split second of, like, an off-screen indicator just showing Ganondorf there, so, like, all right, Ganondorf's in the game. That's been leaked, like, th th this many times. However, what was really exciting was the demo that released. Japan got its own cool demo where you could play as Mario, Mega Man, Villager, and I believe Link. You can only play on Battlefield or the Final Destination version of Battlefield. Could only play in a timed match for two minutes, but that's all you needed, baby. I remember watching people who had Japanese 3DS systems uh, be able to like stream the game, uh, stream the demo that is. So the demo released for everybody like eventually, uh, like via the eShop, but if you were in Club Nintendo, and I believe if you were like a platinum member or like a gold member, whatever, if you bought a certain amount of games that year, uh, you got the demo and like four download codes for the demo to, to give off to other friends. And it was glorious. That was the best email I ever got. In addition to everything leaking beforehand, uh, the game itself in Japan leaked like it, it got released on st stores in certain stores early, broke release date. Uh, and uh, I remember like people were feverishly watching uh, a couple people who got the game early try to play through classic mode and uh, try to unlock the brand new characters. And uh, it was pretty funny because uh, the people who got the game early were not very good at it at all. So I remember people were just like trying cheering on people who just didn't know how to play Smash Brothers as well as they really could have. Uh, it, it was a very exciting time. Uh, we had to wait a couple more weeks in North America to get the game, but we did. October 2014, Super Smash Bros. for 3DS released. Alongside a couple 3DS XL systems, I thought it was a little lame considering how we knew new 3DS systems were coming, they were releasing in Japan, we just weren't getting them until like early next year. Uh, but they were still pushing out Smash Brothers themed 3DS XLs. There was a red one and a blue one, which I thought was really strange, uh, considering that it's just like, you know, the Smash Brothers for 3DS's main color was red. Of course, the Wii U versions was blue. That makes sense. 3DS's main color, red. <laughs> Wii U's color, blue. But it's so strange that a special edition system came in like two different colors like that. Now, I didn't get that version. Um, I thought it was kind of cool. You know, it used the box art design from this and then had the Smash Brothers logo in the corner, but I felt like the Smash Brothers logo looked a bit tacky. Uh, it just, just it, it made the whole system design look a little too busy. Uh, what I wanted is this one. This is pretty much the exact same design, but it's a new 3DS XL, so it's a better system, and it only released in Japan, but uh, here it is right here. Wham! This is gorgeous. So uh, yeah, it has... The 3DS's box art here, uh, kind of in a stylized, uh, hand-drawn uh, look. 
Uh, but instead of having just the Smash Brothers text, you just have the Smash Ball, which I think looks so much better. In addition uh, to this being a uh, th new 3DS XL, so that means, you know, it's it's the definitive 3DS you could get. Uh, yeah, I, I, I love this design. I wish we got it over here. Or I wish, you know, like our variant of it uh, was a little more minimalistic with the Smash Ball here. I, I think this looks a lot better. But no, this came out in October, and I remember spending like the next day just in my room. It was a nice crisp fall day, just playing through Smash Brothers, man. Trying to unlock all the characters, plowing through classic mode. This is such a special game, and it's really unfortunate considering how like it, it is overshadowed by the Wii U version. Because in many cases, uh, you know, for me specifically, but I know a lot of other people are like this. Once the Wii U version came out, not much reason to play this one. But of course, this is the more popular version out of the two that released because the 3DS had a far greater install base. So more people got their Smash 4 fix on the 3DS. But it still kind of felt like the prototype version of the Wii U game in, in some ways. Uh, but that's unfortunate because... In my opinion, I think this is just a better game. It's weird to say that, but I just kind of feel like, you know, stuff like the stages, the modes, it's all just a little better on the 3DS version. And I honestly just kind of feel like looking back at the 3DS version, it has so much more charm being Smash Brothers on 3DS. Like I go back to this game and I'm just hit with just all this nostalgia just because like, you have the Smash 4 experience on 3DS, so you have Smash 4, which is already an amazing experience. And in addition, you have the, the pure novelty of being able to play it on the go. Yeah, they had to pare back a few things with this game. It doesn't feature all the modes you'd expect from Smash Melee and Brawl. Stuff like the event match, that's not here. Special Smash, that's not here either. Uh, you know, it is a pared down Smash Brothers experience when it comes to kind of the, the extra fixins. But in terms of the core Smash Brothers experience, it's all there. And there is more than enough stuff to do here to keep you busy. Since it is a bit pared down, I honestly feel like it's a bit less overwhelming compared to the Wii U game. The Wii U game has so much stuff bursting at the seams. And uh, a, a couple things just kind of feel like they're there, but th they're not really expanded upon. The Wii U version has this mode, like special orders, uh, which is which is a good mode. But uh, you know, like it just it, it feels like it's just kind of there without doing anything more than just being there. It's fun, but every mode in Smash Brothers 3DS, it feels like the experience was fully designed around every mode offered here, you know? Like, it just felt like everything worked into each other, and it just felt like a more well-rounded experience, even if it did have significantly less content than the Wii U game. I feel like the stages in this game are far better than the Wii U version. The Wii U version stages pull me to sleep, man. 3DS had some spunk here. There was so much variety in the stages, so much variety in terms of the games represented. I mean, you just look at like the Animal Crossing stages. You have Tortimer Island on 3DS. You have Town and City on Wii U. That just looks like fucking Smashville again. Rainbow Road on the 3DS version. Mario Circuit on the Wii U version. Pac Maze 3DS. Pac Land Wii U. Do you get what I'm getting at here? I mean, it's just like the 3DS just had better stages in my opinion. And then talking about the modes, I mean, 3DS version has Smash Run. A phenomenal idea that does kind of fall apart when it comes to the execution. You run around this giant map for like five minutes, beating up characters and gaining power-ups, trying to level up your fighter for one final Smash Brothers match at the end. The problem is you're fighting against three other fighters and uh, you don't interact with them though. You can't see what they're doing. You see them appear on the map, but you don't interact with them. You're all doing your own separate thing, even if you're on the same area of the map, you can't see each other. And then the smash battle at the end is completely randomized. So it's, it's like, I almost feel like it would be better if you knew what smash battle you were gonna get at the end at the start, so you can focus on leveling up certain elements of your character, I, I don't know. There's a couple things that I feel like they, they could have maybe just tweaked to make Smash Run a perfect experience. Uh, as it is, it's really fun. It, it, it's a really fun mode, but uh, they could have just done a bit more to make it like th this perfect mode, you know? But that's just one of the elements here. You have all the trophies. 
here to collect. Custom characters, you can collect custom moves to create your own fighter, whether that's a me fighter or just create a unique Mario, unique to you. And yeah, just going through this game uh, over the next month and a half and, and just kind of, you know, collecting as much as I could, playing online, which in my opinion, the online in Smash Brothers for 3DS and Wii U worked really well. I don't know what anybody was saying when it came to like, man, the online didn't work well in this game. Like, I don't know what you're talking about, man. I think it works damn well in this game. Uh, at least on the Wii U version. The 3DS was a little spotty, but it was the 3DS. What are you gonna do? But man, let's talk about Smash Brothers for Wii U. We didn't know a ton about this game's specifics uh, until after the 3DS version came out. We didn't know that it would support the GameCube controller. They announced that before E3 2014 when they had this giant Smash Brothers Invitational, which was this big deal, you know? Like, Nintendo was infamous at the time for kind of putting the kibosh on anything Smash Brothers tournament-wise. You know, Evo famously uh, was gonna have Smash Brothers Melee uh, as a game, and then Nintendo came in and was like, no, 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 you can't do that. And then they eventually, like, worked something out, where, and it became a staple, you know? Smash Brothers became a staple at EVO for years. And just the fact that Smash Wii U was announced to be supporting the GameCube controller w was, like, incredible. And uh, they also announced this uh, special edition bundle, which uh, I unfortunately couldn't get at the time. This right here, man, the Smash Brothers for Wii U game controller bundle. You get the game, the GameCube controller, and the GameCube controller adapter, which is just two USB ports on a, on a little box with four GameCube ports. Yeah, I wanted this. I showed up to GameStop one day, asked if they had it. They did not. So I went on Amazon and I got uh, the game controller and adapter separately. And while I was at it, I thought, why the hell not? I'll get a Mario Amiibo as well. I wasn't gonna get into Amiibo, and now I have all the Smash Brothers ones. God damn it. But yeah, I'm very happy that I did get uh, all these things uh, you know, for launch, uh, you know, they got delivered, uh, uh by Amazon, uh, day of, and, uh, I'm very happy it was because, uh, the GameCube controller and GameCube controller adapter became impossible to find, uh, specifically the GameCube controller adapter. Couldn't find these things for months, uh, you know, late 2014 going into 2015, uh, Nintendo had some stock problems with uh, this specifically, and then also like Amiibo figures. That was a big famous blunder of theirs. But uh, I will say it definitely made getting Amiibos way more fun. Like I will always remember and cherish those memories of having to walk into Target and, and look and just make sure they have any Amiibo. Isn't that fun? Isn't it fun to go to a store and peek and see if they have any special products? You know, like, I don't want to go into a store and just be miserable walking through buying my damn milk or something. I want to buy my damn milk, but also go into the video game section and get spooked if I see a, I see a Wii Fit trainer, you know? But either way, thankfully, later in October, we got a special presentation dedicated to 50 unique facts about the Wii U game. Now, some of these facts were, uh, you know, kind of like, oh, it's just like, oh, man, settings. Like, yeah, yeah. But a lot of these facts were pretty damn cool. Uh, they showed off the Wii U version's unique mode, which was uh, Smash Tour. They showed off Stage Builder, where you could draw the terrain, which definitely expanded upon Brawl's Stage Builder uh, in concept, on paper. We'll get to Stage Builder. But it showed a metric ton of stuff going on in the Wii U game, showing that this was pretty much the 3DS version uh, times a thousand. But the big thing everybody remembers was at the end, they announced that Mewtwo from Smash Brothers Melee would finally be coming back into Smash Brothers via DLC in spring of 2015. And you would only get him, at least at the time, if you bought both the Wii U and 3DS games and you uh, registered them on Club Nintendo. Now, Nintendo wasn't specifically announcing DLC support for Smash Brothers Wii U here. Mewtwo was basically announced as a DLC special bonus. That was it at the time. It wasn't until spring of 2015 that they formally, formally announced like ongoing DLC support for the game. Uh, alongside, we finally got Mewtwo around that time. But... Yeah, like, this was an incredibly exciting time. November of 2014 hit, Smash Brothers for Wii U came alongside it. What a way to end that year as a Nintendo fan. 2014 had such amazing Wii U games. I mean, like, it, it didn't have a huge quantity, 
but it had the quality. I mean, like we got Mario Kart 8 and Smash Brothers. And just those games alone are enough to really be like, man, this was a big year for the Wii U. However, you add in the hype of Smash Brothers, Wii U and 3DS, just speculating those characters, speculating those stages. What's gonna be in this game? Oh my God, DLC support, all of this stuff, all the news going on, it kept things going so much it, it was so damn exciting and yeah i played this game to death uh over like 200 300 hours in this game this was kind of my go-to like after a day of work or after school i'd go upstairs and i'd play smash brothers for wii u online for like an hour or two like this was generally the game that you know i, I kind of played in my downtime for like a year or two there. So like I have a ton of just love for this game. I think Smash 4 is something where it's not my favorite Smash game now, uh, mainly because like, you know, I pop it in and I'm not gonna have nearly as much to do in it as like Smash Ultimate, obviously or uh, Smash Brothers Brawl. I look at Smash Brothers Brawl and I, and I see this treasure trove of fun stuff to explore. You know, like collecting all the stickers, playing the little coin launcher game, going through the Nintendo Chronicle. There's just so much fun little dumb stuff to do in that game. Smash Wii U is kind of this weird little middle child right now. That is, you know, back in 2014 to like 2017, this was like, Man, you know, I, I I couldn't ask for a better Smash Brothers game, really. I mean, I could, but I, I was too lazy to do it because I was too busy playing Smash Brothers for Wii U. Because I do have some problems with this game, but those problems just kind of end up being like, you know, just kind of nitpicks. But at the end of the day, like, I played this game to death. I loved it so much. But a lot of the extra things in this game just kind of added up to just a whole lot of nothing, you know? Like, uh, I, I, it just didn't really do much for me. The stage builder ended up being more limiting than the stage builder in Smash Brothers Brawl. It barely had any features. I think they were banking on the fact that you could draw the terrain. That was like, oh, wow, the possibilities are endless. But they, they they let you do that instead of actually giving you like anything to put on the stages. You only had like six things you could put on them. Classic mode in this game is balls. It's so bad. It's so random and it's so stupid. I hate it. You move on like this board or whatever. It's like they advertised it as if there was some strategy to it. But like there really isn't. It's just random shit happens. The final boss is crazy though. I mean, you have like the master core with all of its forms and then it turns into the master fortress, which was a Wii U exclusive form. And it's really cool, but you know, like the master fortress is just this very short, just like little platforming section. Lasts like 20 seconds. I'm just kind of questioning why, why is it just this, the same thing every time? You know, it would make sense if there was like, maybe like five different versions of it where it's just like, oh, if, if you beat the master core forms like fast enough, you get the harder version or something like that. I, I just feel like it's, it's kind of a weird thing how it's just, it's the same platforming section every single time. I beat the game on like 9.0 difficulty, like uh, probably like twice or something. I don't need to do it ever again, man. That, that was woof. Special orders is cool. Um, but uh, you know, like I said, it just kind of feels like it's there. Like it doesn't really add anything. It's just kind of an extra thing to do. Smash Tour was a controversial one. I appreciate it to an extent. I think it's a dumb, fun little party mode, but yeah, it, it definitely feels like all the love and attention was put into Smash Run. And Smash Tour is kind of more of just like a, it just doesn't really feel like it it really had a ton of thought put into it but uh, i've played it a couple times and i think it's just a dumb fun kind of game i've seen a lot of people vividly hate smash tour i don't hate it i just think it's a, a silly dumb little mode uh you know and it, it, it can be something where it, it just spices up your your multiplayer night you know you can play it a little bit and then you can go right back to normal smash brothers matches and those normal matches they felt amazing in smash wii u at the time especially with the gamecube controller i had that adapter plugged into the wii u at all times man uh it, it was so great to play this game with an actual controller uh, and uh, I'm, I'm not like a GameCube controller purist with Smash Brothers. Uh, you know, with Smash Ultimate, uh, I played that a bit with the GameCube controller, but uh, nowadays I always just play with the Nintendo Switch Pro controller. But yeah, it felt so good in this game. Um, and uh, I pretty much completed almost everything here. I completed most of the challenges wall. Uh, I, I just, I'm missing like, I think like one or two things. And I think I'm missing one trophy and it's Dixie Kong. But yeah, man, I, I played this game to death. I absolutely love it. But yeah, I, I think 
launching with the 3DS version first definitely does kind of take a bit away from this game for me. Uh, I, I just don't view it as the same as something like uh, Smash Brawl or Smash Ultimate. You know, it's, it's an odd middle child because they did this unique thing launching these two separate versions of the game. And it definitely kind of takes away from a bit of this game's identity. Not only does it not have a story mode, but it also shares so much of this experience with the 3DS game, which launched a month and a half earlier. So when this game came out, it wasn't like this uh, incredible, like brand new experience. It, it was pretty much like getting an HD remake of a game that came out a month ago. Still amazing, but like, you know, it, it, it's not the same. And the stages in this game, like I said, they were just underwhelming, you know? Like it didn't matter at the end of the day because most of the time I was playing online and online matches, I, I've only played in Four Glory, where it was one-on-one -on -one, and it was on Final Destination modes only. Now, I've seen some people uh, say that they've randomly gotten like Battlefield uh, in in uh, Four Glory, which feels like it's like a 0.1% chance you'll get Battlefield. I don't know why it's so rare you'll get Battlefield of all stages, but whatever. Which I love the feature that they had in this game where every stage had a Final Destination form. It allowed it so then like, hey, if a stage sucked ass, you can still enjoy the aesthetics of it uh, in a more traditional stage format, you know? But what I found weird was how, uh, in the online mode, I believe it was stated that the very large stages, like the huge ones, like Palutena's Temple or something, um, those would very rarely appear in online matches. But that was also true for Four Glory mode. Like, I very rarely saw the Final Destination versions of the huge stages, which it wouldn't matter at that point because it was just the Final Destination form. Like, it, they it, they weren't big anymore. So uh, it, it was very strange how that, at least to me, felt like it carried over to For Glory mode, uh, that little rule. Uh, very strange. But uh, like I was saying, the stages in this game, there's some good ones but they had to pad it out with a lot of returning stages. I believe this game has fewer new stages than Smash Brothers Brawl, and that was obviously because, you know, when you combine Wii U and 3DS, you know, they both have more new stages than Brawl, and the overall stage count in this game is higher than Brawl, so it doesn't really matter at the end of the day, but the returning stages, they didn't do enough to them. They, they just, they, they look just a little stinky. They obviously look like they're from older games. It doesn't really feel like there's that TLC you see in like, let, let's compare this to Mario Kart 8. The retro tracks in that game feel like they're the exact same as the new tracks. You know, they look brand new. They look completely modern. Whereas the retro tracks in the game like Mario Kart Wii, those don't feel as modern. Those feel like they're, they're very much old ass tracks. And that's how the returning stages feel in Smash Wii U. On the 3DS, it doesn't feel as bad because, you know, they're 3DS visuals. But here, when you see something like Onet, when you see something like Yoshi's Island from Melee in the game, they just, they don't look that great. And uh, because they're all on the same screen on the stage select, it just feels like they should have gone in and remastered them, which is what they did in Smash Ultimate, and those stages are amazing. But yeah, at the time, this was like the game I played the absolute most, and I still have a ton of love and respect for this game. But looking back at it all, I think I, 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 I definitely have a bit more love for the 3DS version, or, or at least I, I'd rather play it right now. Smash Wii U has definitely been kind of like eclipsed by something like Smash Ultimate. They're both different games. Like Smash Wii U plays very differently from Smash Ultimate. They look very similar, but you know, when you get your hands on them, they're very different games. But Ultimate is just kind of like, it, it obviously is the replacement for Smash Wii U. For Smash 3DS, I mean, there's still that novelty factor to it, man. I mean, like, it still feels cool to play. Smash Wii U, it just kind of feels like you're playing an outdated version of Smash Ultimate. But still, a phenomenal game. Uh, really just made me so damn happy. Kept me busy for years. I just remember coming home, listening to a Nintendo podcast as usual, and just playing through Smash Wii U, trying to unlock more of the trophies, trying to unlock more of the challenge wall, playing online. I'd spent so much of my time throughout high school just playing this game as kind of my escape when I would get home. But that's not the end of the story because throughout 2015, we got DLC, baby. We got Mii Fighter costumes, new characters, returning characters, new stages, returning stages. 
it was really damn exciting. So we got Mewtwo first off, and uh, when they were doing DLC for Smash Wii U and 3DS, uh, they, they obviously had a bit of a cut to the budget, or at least like some time constraints, because uh, pretty much most of the trailers did not include any of the fancy CGI we got with the pre-release trailers. They had to find some uh, clever ways to utilize in-game footage to create uh, trailers that were on a similar level to the CGI trailers, and I think they did a really good job. You know, we started off with Mewtwo, and I love that trailer. Just his eye appearing, and then it's Mewtwo strikes back. Oh yeah! And his render pose on the character select screen, oh my god, that looks so cool. Uh, Mewtwo's release was, like, huge. But then we also got Me Fighter costumes, which, I, from what I remember, this first wave wasn't anything special. They were just random little Me Fighter costumes. Eventually, uh, they found that they could kind of fulfill a couple little character requests via these Me Fighter costumes. We ended up getting stuff like King K. Rule. We ended up getting stuff like Lloyd Irving from Tales of Symphonia. Just a lot of random stuff that's, like, Wow, like it blew my mind seeing that. But alongside the Mewtwo announcement, we got the announcement of Lucas. Lucas returning from Brawl. He was one of the characters cut. We had like Lucas, Wolf, Ice Climbers, the Pokemon Trainer all got cut alongside, you know, like the melee veterans that just refused to come back like Roy, Young Link. A lot of these characters are now fair game to speculate on, man. It was so exciting again. So... Moving throughout the spring, uh, it was all about what characters they can announce at E3. Now, there was like some data mining that happened where uh, people found that some Street Fighter music was in the files of the game. Now, uh, this music sounded very much arcade slash SNES-E, and uh, I just kind of thought like, hey, Mega Man's in the game. He's a Capcom character. Maybe they were just testing some stuff out. You know, why would this be, like, some retro music? You know, it would obviously be, like, uh, fully orchestrated if it was, uh, you know, in Smash Brothers. So I just thought that was a bunch of pooey. You know, why why would they put Ryu in the game? They already have a Capcom character. That was a Smash Brothers rule that we all thought of. It was like, no, no, no. You have one third-party character. Sonic, you can't have another Sega character. Pac-Man can't have another Namco character. So it's just like, Ryu's not gonna be in the game. Ryu was in the f***ing game. Yeah, so I had to wake up ass early one day for like some kind of like weird placement testing or something. I don't know why I had to take like a test at the high school in like, like early June. Like I think school was out at this point. I don't know, it was like for like college. It was like the ACT or something like that. Woke up ass early, looked on Twitter or YouTube. I saw, oh boy, right before E3 2015, some stuff got leaked. Uh, they did like a Smash Brothers update and uh, they data mined it and they found immediately like everything that was gonna be announced at E3 2015. Ryu and Roy. You know, I found the inclusion of Roy to be really funny. In fact, actually, I believe uh, Roy's inclusion was also leaked alongside the Ryu sound bites, uh, you know, earlier before the big E3 2015 leak. But uh, yeah, the main thing that was leaked here was the victory video that occurred uh, when beating classic mode. Uh, yep, you just saw Ryu's victory video and Roy's victory video just leak online and Nintendo took them down, they copyright claimed them, just proved it immediately. It was also down to mind for like the Kirby's Dreamland stage from 64 got brought back. In addition, like an Inkling trophy from Splatoon was, was in the game now. Crazy stuff. Uh, and this was a couple days before a Smash Brothers DLC presentation where, uh, Yep, that was pretty much everything that was announced. It was all leaked. Still really cool. Uh, the way they did Ryu's trailer was very exciting. And uh, the way they implemented him was super cool. You know, incorporating all these different fighting game moves. Pretty much making him like a true fighting game character in Smash Brothers, which defied all the archetypes of the fighting game. You know, trying to use its own control style. Well, you can use that control style with Ryu, but... You can also use the standard bind combinations that, you know, you might be used to in Street Fighter, which was really cool. And they've done that gimmick uh, since then with pretty much all the other fighting game characters that have appeared in Smash Brothers. And it gets less and less cool every single time. I'm just kind of like, yeah, cool, but it's like, you know, that was like a gimmick that was 
cool with Ryu because he was the fighting game character in the game. Now there's like four of them. Roy being here was really cool to see. Uh, he was my favorite of like the Fire Emblem characters, or at least the Fire Emblem characters that played similar to Marth uh, in Smash Wii U. Uh, I love, I love his neutral B. Uh, it, it's just, it, it's so satisfying to land that stupid ass thing. And uh, I love the fact that there are two characters named Roy in Smash Wii U. In fact, I love that there are different sound files for the announcer saying Roy, like it's different, <laughs> different sound files for two different Roys. I love it. And I love the fact that they referenced that in the trailer. They were really having fun with these reveal trailers. Uh, but other than that, you know, they had a couple extra little announcements for uh, Smash Wii U via this DLC presentation. But most of it was leaked, though Lucas, Roy, Ryu all released that day alongside the Kirby's Dream Land stage and the Miiverse stage, which was very fun. But then after that, like, uh, Smash Brothers took a bit of a break for a bit. Uh, it was it was very quiet there. Uh, we got some Mii Fighter updates. Uh, you know, we eventually got some other N64 stages, which were cool to see, like Mushroom Kingdom and uh, Hyrule Castle. And we also got some extra Mii Fighter costumes. Later down the line, like I believe in September, we got a Mario Maker stage, which was like, holy God. It was just like so elaborate for a DLC stage. Like, wow, it was, it was really well done. They also introduced the pirate ship stage from Brawl, which was like the Wind Waker stage. Incredibly random one to bring back there, but I'm not complaining. That stage was beautiful. Uh, they also made the Duck Hunt stage from the Wii U game available on the 3DS version for free, which was like, oh my god. Here's a side note. This is a really weird little thing, but the 3DS game had like a specific in-game shop for the DLC where, uh, you know, like it's just, you click on it and it's like, it, it's just a menu in the game. Like it's specific Smash Brothers menu. Uh, the Wii U game doesn't have that. When you click on like DLC, it brings you directly to the Nintendo eShop on Wii U, which was a little funny. But yeah, that was pretty much it for Smash Brothers for a bit until November of, uh, of 2015, where we finally got our next DLC character announcement, Cloud. Now I was unfortunately spoiled on this. Um, uh, this Nintendo Direct was going on while I was working. Uh, and uh, this was the first Nintendo Direct in a while. Uh, because, uh, you know, unfortunately, in that the summer of 2015, uh, the Nintendo president, Satoru Iwata, passed away. And I think, you know, Nintendo was kind of just like, we don't really know what to do with Nintendo Directs for a bit there. So uh, they were going a bit quiet. They didn't really need Nintendo Directs, to be honest. You know, they, they had most of the stuff they needed to get out, out already. You know, you had Mario Maker, Yoshi's Woolly World. You know, they, they got by without it. But uh, they finally brought him back in November of 2015. And uh, this was a fairly stacked event. You know, we had Twilight Princess HD. And, uh, you know, it ended with the Final Fantasy VII intro music. And then it led into Cloud. And uh, I was accidentally spoiled in this because I think I accidentally opened up a new tab to Twitter. And the first article that I saw was just the, the title, you know, like, oh, Cl Cl what does Cloud joining Smash Brothers mean or something? And I immediately backed out. All I saw was like the name. And I was like, huh, really? This was such like a weird, like, whatever, like shot in the dark, crazy, iconic video game character you'd never expect to see in Smash Brothers, but he made it in. I think Cloud really kind of paved the way for the amazing DLC picks and amazing third party characters we got in Smash Brothers Ultimate, you know? Like this was like the first one outside of Snake that was like really like this holy shit moment. You know, characters like Mega Man and Pac-Man, those were big. You know, same with Ryu. But those always kind of felt like they were comfortably in that Nintendo sphere. Uh, even Snake to some extent, but Cloud was like this, this huge, like moving things forward, like, you know, anything's possible at this point. That was an incredible moment. I can't lie and be like, oh my god, Cloud was one of my most wanted characters. But it was just, it was just an exciting moment. Something where it's like, oh my god. This actually happened. But then they officially announced a Smash Brothers presentation for December in 2015. They used Brawl music for this, so I think a lot of people were speculating that Wolf <laughs> was coming back. Oh boy. But no, this all happened and uh, I had to catch this one later as well. I couldn't catch it live, uh, but I wasn't spoiled on anything, thankfully. But uh, part of me kind of hopes I did. I was because uh, they first announced Corrin from Fire Emblem Fates was gonna be a DLC character. 
Damn it. Yeah, Fire Emblem already had a lot of reps in Smash Wii U. Uh, so to have this character uh, from a game that wasn't even out here in North America yet and ended up being uh, one of the more disliked Fire Emblem games overall, uh, yeah, that, that was a bit that was a bit lame. Though uh, to act like this was like super lame, uh, I, I think is a little ridiculous because, you know, Corrin effectively did the same thing that Roy did in Smash Brothers Melee because Roy... Uh, was from a game that wasn't even officially out yet in Japan. Uh, so uh, Corrin, being from a game that you know was already out in Japan, you know Fire Emblem Fates already had launched by the time Corrin came out for Smash Wii U. Uh, but uh, at least here in North America, it wasn't out yet. It wasn't unheard of. Smash Brothers has done this before. Whatever. It was just very deflating. You know, you have one to two DLC characters left. It's almost, it's kind of like the Byleth thing. You know, in Smash Ultimate, when we only had one character left and it turned out to be Byleth, yeah, that was super dumb and annoying. To be fair, we didn't have one character left. I think we were all getting annoyed at the concept that what if this was the last character? Because this was the last character in the Smash Brothers Fighter Pass. Uh, and then, you know, before Byleth was even announced, they announced, hey, we're doing a second round. I think the concept of what if this was the last thing, that was more annoying than, like, Byleth actually appearing. Though, uh, Byleth actually appearing annoyed me, mainly because, like, god damn it. Like, you aren't making the argument that all these Fire Emblem characters look so damn similar any less prevalent. But whatever. Korn was announced, and Korn was a, a fine character to play as. It was pretty fun. Uh, but uh, just not exciting, not very interesting. Uh, and then they moved into talking more about Cloud, who released that day in December of 2015. But then the final character was announced. And this character was the winner, in quotes, of an initiative they announced earlier in April of 2015. The Smash Brothers Fighter Ballot, which this was an incredibly fun thing to do here. Uh, the fact that Nintendo opened up uh, pretty much a forum where you could submit your very own Smash Brothers fighter request. Anything was on the table. It wasn't like you had a giant list to pick from. You could literally type whatever you wanted, as many times as you wanted. I submitted Chibi Robo because I think he deserves it, damn it. However, who ended up winning? Bayonetta. Yeah, I think this was kind of a cool way to end things out. You know, Bayonetta uh, just kind of felt like you know, hey, here's a third-party character that's kind of a Nintendo character at this point, since Nintendo funded Bayonetta 2, and uh, is the only reason why that game came out, and is also like, hey, th this ended up being like a Game of the Year candidate in 2014, and ended up being like amazing. So you have this fan-favorite character from this Game of the Year caliber series. Yeah, I think this was kind of cool. Now overall, I doubt Bayonetta actually won the Smash Brothers ballot. The way they worded it was like, oh, out of realistic choices, Bayonetta won. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you could just say literally everything but Bayonetta wasn't realistic because Bayonetta was one that you just like, yeah, sure, we'll do that. But still, I, I, I found this to be like a very cool fitting end to uh, Smash Brothers for Wii U. These characters wouldn't come out until February of 2016 and that was it. Well, uh, we had to wait until like like mid 2017 for like uh, the remaining Smash Brothers Wii U amiibo to release. But after that, that was pretty much it for the Smash Brothers Wii U and 3DS Legacy. And then it was only one year later that we got Smash Brothers Ultimate announced, and the whole thing started all over again. Let me tell you, man, there ain't nothing like build up to a Smash Brothers game. I'm a little worried for the next game in the series, mainly because uh, I, I felt like Smash Wii U and Smash Ultimate building up to those games coming out. Uh, it was still fun to be like, in quotes, casual Smash Brothers fan. And when I say casual, uh, I mean like, I'm not into the technical specs of everything. I like the game because I, I just, I love Smash Brothers. I love it as a franchise. I love it as a game. I, I love the little details. I love playing it. I love just exploring every little nook and cranny, but I don't give a f about hitboxes, man. I don't care if a character is viable. I don't care 
uh, really about tournaments. I like watching competitive play, but I don't follow it religiously whatsoever. And while I, I always watched like Smash Ultimate reveals with excitement and, and curiosity, and I loved seeing like what these new characters brought to the table and seeing every little nook and cranny and I played them on release date every time and just just absorbed everything they were by the end of the DLC I was starting to feel a little like like oh this this franchise is, is steering a little away from being able to be super invested in it without being super into the competitive side of things I just kind of felt like it was steering a little more towards catering towards the more competition oriented people while uh, you know I, I respect the hell out of the competition side of things. Um, you know, I, I, I just like, I like the build up to these games uh, more back then when it, when it was really fun to just analyze the little, the little visual details rather than the technical ones. But that's how I really enjoyed Smash Brothers. You know, I'm not gonna, you know, I, I don't think there's any right or wrong way to enjoy the franchise, but uh, I, I just hope that when the next game comes out, it's still fun to enjoy and not like a, a giant, giant shit show. Like, man, f this. I wanted this character, and f this. That character doesn't look competitively viable. I just want to have fun with whatever comes next for this franchise. I want to be able to speculate on stuff without having to play 40 chess as to like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It only makes sense for Pyre and Mithra to be in the game because of X, Y, and Z. I just kind of felt like speculation became less fun with Smash Ultimate, mainly because uh, the doors were completely wide open. Anybody could be in the game which is amazing, but at the same time, uh, I kind of liked the fake rules we had to put in, where what made sense within those fake rules, and it made it easier to just try to decipher. Like, everybody had their own opinion, and uh, it, it just kind of felt like near the end of Smash Ultimate, there were so many possibilities that uh, it, it just became, like, a little less fun for me personally. Uh, but uh, that doesn't mean that if we keep going forward with that direction, I'm not going to have fun. I think it's just because, hey, right now, I don't know what's coming next for Smash Brothers. And I'm excited, and I can't wait to see what they do, and, and I'm interested to see what direction they take with the build-up to launch, and what direction they take with all the little details, what characters they pick, all of that. And if it wasn't for this game right here, I wouldn't have such a stupid opinion on how they build up the launch to the next game.